takeaway from last night's draft? Well, Skip, what I, what I deduce from this is that because there was no clear number one, there was no Tim Duncan, there was no Shaquille O'Neal, because those guys didn't work out. Shaquille O'Neal just showed up. Tim Duncan just showed up. LeBron just showed up. When you don't have a consensus, number one, who do we think is going to be the best fit of the, with the personnel that we have? They got a bunch of guards. They got Markel Folks, who was the number one overall pick. They got Sug, uh, uh, Jalen Suggs, who was a top, I think, top five pick, maybe sure. top five, top seven pick. And uh, Cole Anthony, uh, mm. Greg Anthony's mm. son. Yep. Um, um, so mm. you got three guards, and then you got Wendell Carter. Mm. Mo, uh, Mo Wagner, I thought he played... Uh, Franz Wagner. Bar Franz, yep. Franz Bar yep. I thought he played well. Wendell Carter Jr., um, they got Mo Bamba. Uh, they do. They, 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 they got, got a few they, pieces. They got, they got some pieces. Yep. But for me, Skip, uh, and so clearly they felt that Bancaro would be better with that. But when I look at him, I think Jabari Smith, the way he can shoot the basketball and the way he can defend on the other end, I think right now he's a more complete player and he's ready to more plug and play. Now, Bancaro can get to the rim better than Smith. You would like to think that Smith is going to improve at finishing at the rim. Now, he's an ex outstanding leaper. He can't put the ball on the floor quite yet like Ben Carroll can mm -hmm. and finish because he has a – Ben Carroll has that big body. He has he a, a big he, he's a body man. that can play through I, contact. I, I agree. But when you look at the way the Smith kid, uh, Jabari Smith, can shoot the ball – Jabari Smith mm -hmm. Jr. If I'm yep. not mistaken, he's from Atlanta. I think he went to Sandy Creek. I just know he's Atlanta area. Yeah. Yep. Well, uh, I think – if I'm not mistaken, I think Calvin Johnson went to Sandy Creek also. I believe you're correct. I, I, yep. I think so. I mean – uh, and so that's that's the direction I kind of kind of would have gone in, Skip. But I like him going to Houston. They're going to be up and down. They got some athletic guys that can fly through the air. You know, uh, Jalen Green and Kevin Porter Jr. I like Kenya Martin Jr. Son. They have some nice pieces. I, I like Shingun. I yeah. just like his attitude yes. and the way he plays. Now, go ahead. They're, they're, <laughs> they happen to be in the loaded Western Conference. They do. So they, they're going to need a, a few more pieces, and they have the draft picks to maybe maybe trade and, and some of those draft picks and get a proven player, or just you just play it out through the draft. But I think Skip, and also I want to say this. I don't care what anybody said. Somebody tipped Vegas off about who they were going to take. We did the topic yesterday. It was runaway money. Yeah. Pouring in on Bank hey, no, to go no, first. Think about it, Skip. I mean, there was no... I mean, you look at it a week ago, where the odds were. You look at it three days ago, where the odds were. And then all of a sudden, the night before the draft, it goes haywire the other way. And yet... Mid-afternoon yesterday, an ESPN report said it is firm, firm that Jabari Smith is going to go one and Holmgren's going to go two. Okay, so, and that they were going to go one, two, three, right. and obviously Bank it, Arrow it, to Houston. It, okay. Skip, it's kind of like when we see the line swing, it's like, yeah. why is it, why is it, in basketball or football, why is the line swing, and then all of a sudden come to find out such and such isn't playing? How y'all know? Mm. Y'all ain't got no, how you know? So that's where I am. I just think because there was no consensus. There was no LeBron. There was no Shaq, no Duncan. In this draft, all these looks so like you're suggesting there's some insider trading information yeah, out there, yeah, and that yeah. something came from inside the Magic's somebody, office. Somebody, somebody told Skip, mm -hmm. there's no way. Okay. All of a sudden, the line was for for Holmgren or Jabari Smith, and then a day before the draft, all the money starts pouring in on one guy. Something just seems suspicious. Now look, you're running. You, you know, you play the odds. But no, not not this kind of and odds. And remember, the other weird plot twist was they had Holmgren in for a workout. They had Jabari in for a workout. workout. They did not bring Ben Caro in for a workout. Right. He said he did Zoom calls with them, but he did not go for a workout. Right. So how do you go figure, right? right? Exactly. Now, I don't think he you now. That's a Shaq move. That's a LeBron move. That's a Duncan move where they're so dominant and you already know. Uh, Y'all might say, hey, Commissioner, go ahead and start the call for number two because we already selected LeBron at number one. Sure. We're already getting Duncan or Shaquille O'Neal at one. Yep. I don't think Ben Carroll is that head and shoulders where you don't bring him in and don't even work him out that he's that head and shoulders above the other two guys. Mm -hmm. Now, that's your call. But for me, Skip, I'm like, what are you being so secretive about? Mm -hmm. You got the number one pick. It's not like you're like two or three and you're like, hey, don't let this workout get out. Like you heard what happened with uh, Utah when they worked out Donovan Mitchell. If this workout gets out to anybody... Everybody's going to get fired. Mm. Okay, well, Skip, you're down there to your 10, 12, 11, 12. Yep. But when you're the first pick, when you got the first pick in the draft, who cares? Nobody can, can somebody jump over number one and select Bangaro if you have the number one spot? No. no. So it, it just made no sense why they were trying to play it so coy. You got the number one pick. I don't get it either. And I don't get taking him number one. I am with you. 
Jabari is a better shooter. Jabari is a better leaper. Jabari is a better one through five defender where he's more versatile yeah. on defense. I give you Bancaro's got an NBA body and mentality. Yes. He's a shot creator. He, he's just a nice NBA player. Yes. But is he the first pick in the draft? I, I don't see it. No, I don't. I, and, I didn't see it. And I'm, I'm lost on what, what did they see that nobody else seemed to see? Because nobody had him going one. No. Nobody ranked him. I, no. I, every mock I read had Jabari a little to a lot better right. than Bancaro. And Skill, when I watched him at Duke, I don't think he I don't think he was better than B.I. I don't think he was better than Jason Tate. Made him, I mean, and he damn sure wasn't better than Zion. And we know Zion went number one overall. But Skip, when I look at him, was he better than B.I.? Was he better than J.T.? And remember, I, a whole bunch of Duke kids kept going in the first round. So it's yeah. not like he was the whole show. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Okay. Before I launch on this, a quick step back point. In all my years of watching any kind of draft, let's keep it on NBA drafts, I've never been so confused as I was the whole <laughs> night last night because every other pick was so-and-so takes so-and-so, but, but hold, hold the phone because so-and-so might be going to so-and-so. Right. What? <laughs> There's a trade in the works, but it's not official. Well, what, what? So the kid would come up and do his interview wearing the hat of the team that took him, but in the end, he was going no. to another team. Yes. I couldn't follow it. <laughs> I still don't know. Did, did Oklahoma City take two picks in a row? Or did they... I, I don't know. And I was I went to sleep thoroughly confused by exactly what, what happened to, to the point I had a headache at the end of the night. Well, they should have did it like Vince Carlin and, and, James, and, and Antoine Jameson, Skip. Just wait, and both of them get up there on the stage at the same time yeah, and just swap just hats. Just swap hats. Okay. <laughs> now to my takeaway. I give you Jabari, and yet, because I give you Jabari, the most fascinating pivotal point in the draft for me became what? Bancaro yeah. just went one? What is Sam Presti going to do now? Right. Because supposedly, reportedly, all along, there was no smoke screen in Oklahoma City. It just looked like they were sitting on Chet Holmgren. Holmgren. Yep. So I thought, Sam, Jabari just fell right in your lap because nobody saw this coming unless your intel is way better than anybody else's, and maybe it, it would be. Maybe it was, yeah. He let Jabari slip right through his fingers and go right on to Houston. Mm -hmm because he was dead set on taking Chet Holmgren. It had been the plan from the start. Right. It's almost like Sam Presti was laughing at everybody else, saying, you missed it from the start. He should have gone one, and you let him fall to me. I don't care about Jabari Smith. I, I don't care about Paulo Bancaro. Right. I only cared about this kid right. because he's going to change our life. That's that's the message I got from Sam Presti yep. at number two, because that pick went up to the commissioner in about five seconds. Yes. Because they were sitting on and standing firm on Chet Holmgren. Okay. I have so much respect for Sam Presti because just in a nutshell, I'm going to run down a few. Th these are all really of his first round hits. He took this guy named Durant in 07 <laughs> with the second overall. I think it worked out. Top 75. Then he shocked me. He took Russell Westbrook out of UCLA. I watched that team again and again and again, and I just I never saw him. Right. I didn't see him like Sam saw him, and he was right, even though he's turned into a wreck out here. Right. But still, that's 08 draft. He took him fourth overall. Is that, that that's pretty good? good. Yeah. I'd say it's pretty good. That same draft, at 24 in the first round, he took a young man named Serge Ibaka. Was that good? Yep. I'd say that's great. <sighs> Next year, 09, he takes James Harden. I watched him a lot at Arizona State, and I couldn't see this. Right. I didn't see th that, that, like all time, all time, right. but Sam Presti did, so he took him third overall. Right. I'd say that worked. They didn't keep him. That's a whole other story, right. but he snagged him, right? Yep. Okay, and then he took this kid out of BC named <laughs> Reggie Jackson with the 24th overall pick. He's still going strong, yes. right? Yes. Okay, that's pretty good. And he took uh, a big kid named Stephen Adams, and this is in 2013, with the 12th overall. He's still going strong, yep. right? That, that's a score. Cameron Payne didn't stay in Oklahoma City, but this is the 15 draft. He took him 14th overall. I love Cam Payne. Right. I, I just, I, but that's a, that's a hit to right. me, right? He did take Terrence Ferguson, but it was later in the draft at 21, and he took Mitch McGarry, who got hurt and, and had all kinds yeah. of issues, but that was 21. And I, I like Mitch McGarry at Michigan. I liked him a yeah. lot, so I, I got the pick. And then you said yesterday on the show, you like Josh Giddy. 
Well, he took him sixth overall in 22. Here mm -hmm. we go, right? Yep. And, and you saw something you liked yes. last year. Yes, Okay, I just gave you the basic track record of one Sam Presti, and he is thumbing his nose at this league saying, you're all wrong about Chet Holmgren. I told you again and again on this show, when I saw the high school video, I said, I've never seen anything quite like right. that. I'm just talking about the, the sheer athletic quickness, the spring at seven feet tall with seven, six length to block shots, handle 360 spins, dribble the ball up the right. floor, quick dunk. Well, in high school, he played like Kevin Durant. He did. But he I, didn't see, I didn't see enough of okay. that in college. I'm with you. And all I cared about this year was I watched some Gonzaga games. <sighs> Boy, I watched some to the point that I, I watched them play Santa Clara. And then Sam Presti took that kid, uh, Jalen Williams. Yeah. Listen, he can flat out play. And I yes. forget, I don't have it in front of me, but he took him on down the draft. Yeah. And he took him one pick after he took the French game. They had right. back to back. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I thought that was a score. But my point is, the more I watched Chet Holmgren at Gonzaga as we got into the NCAAs, the less I liked. Right. Because I saw timid. I saw yes. overwhelmed. Yes. I saw, yes. I don't belong out here. Right. Well, I, it's, it horrifies me. Right. You know, projecting to the next level, it's a man's game. Yeah. And, and I don't see much grown man in that body. Right. And, and I'm fearful that, that we never will. But the, the freakish ability at that length is something Sam Presti says you don't get it. But it's, it's, there's project written all over this. Yes. And, and they're a team that, you, that everybody's going to have to hang in and grow right. with, right? Right. But Sam Presti is saying he's going to be a star. That's I, what he's saying. I think the thing is, Skip, is that the luxury that he has is that he plays in OKC, and there's not a whole lot of expectations. So there's an opportunity for him to grow. Yeah. Whereas then, if, if, and, and plus, he didn't go number one overall. There's still a slight expectations. When you go number one overall, even if there's not a whole lot of expectation, you're supposed to be a franchise changer. Mm -hmm. You got to change. They sh took Shaq, and they took Duncan. They took these guys number one overall. And we're going to talk about this a little later. And, you know, Pinkero, is he, is, he, is he a bust or is he going to be a beast or whatever? Skip, I just think the thing is, is that when I look at these guys, I'm like, okay, yeah, good, solid players. But I'm not like, man, hey, Skip, in three years, one of them guys going to be a, a, a MVP. I, I, they could, it could be. But I, I don't see that. I don't see that right now. I mean, Chet Holmgren, they like, he's a wing. Yeah, no drive he's going to be on the wing. With that body, he ain't playing down on the block. It's because he can shoot it. Yes. He, he didn't shoot it great in their big games against the tougher teams. Right. But to your point, you, you had all the research broken down yeah. against the not-so-good teams. He, he was he dominant. the lights out. Yes. Okay, and he wound up being a 40% three-point shooter. That should translate if, if you have the guts to make them. But what happened when he pushed up, up in competition? Mm -hmm. He stayed in foul trouble. It, well, it, and... I hate the NCAAs for that reason. <laughs> it's like English teachers grading your papers. Yeah. Like, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, right? And he, he got two quick fouls in both the games against Memphis and Arkansas, and then he's kind of shackled the whole game, right. like, I don't know if I can do this or not. So I don't know. Sam Presti's saying you, you're not seeing. You, right. You, Sam Presti's saying you're not seeing the great because you're getting lost in the not so great in the, right. in the, the you keep, tournament. You keep telling me what the kid can't do, but I've just found all the things that the kid can do. Yep. And so I'm just going to focus on what he can do, and I'll let you guys focus on what he can't do, and we're going to see at, in four or five years who's right and who's wrong. Okay, and, and it is four or five years, and to your point, I think he's got four or five years, and I've told you before, I have so many friends in Oklahoma City who were Thunder fans, right. like past tense, my closest friends, Craig and Bev Humphreys, I should quick shout out to her because she's going through some medical issues. Right. God bless you, girl. Hang tough. Get but, well. Yeah. But the point is, they have given up their season tickets. And I said, and, and Craig told me last night, I, I just can't get her to go anymore. Well, what, what's to go for? Right. It's hard, man. Yeah. Josh Giddy, yes. No, nah, Are you no, going to no, get no. Giddy over N Giddy? No, nah, he needs to be Luca. Okay. All right. <laughs> so the, the point is that that they have time because they got projects everywhere. Yes. So you're just going to have to wait. And then <laughs> remember what Bruce Pearl said about the two Auburn kids, because right. there's another one yeah. other than Jabari, that Kessler. Walker Kessler. He goes 22. I couldn't figure out where he had gone, but I thought he went to Memphis, and then he wound up in Minnesota. So right. he's gone to Minnesota at 22. And Stretch the, to put him beside Carl yep, Anthony. There you go. And the quote from Bruce Pearl was, that Walker Kessler, who was the NCAA Defensive Player of the Year, right. was the most impactful player in all of college basketball last year. 
because of what he did at the rim on both ends. Well, he just flat out saying he's better than Chet Holmgren. Right. Well, here we go. So we got number two overall versus number 22. Who's going to win that race, right? right? Well, we're going to find out. I, yeah. I just say I think the thing is hey, Walker Kessler is in a better situation. Yeah. Considering he got Carl Anthony Towns, the number one overall pick. Yeah. Third team all NBA. He got Anthony Edwards, who's the number one overall pick. He got D'Angelo Russell, who's the second <laughs> overall pick. Ooh. So it's not like Minnesota does not have talent. And they made, and they probably should have advanced past the first round if they didn't play such dumb basketball late in ball games. They're a force to be reckoned yeah. with to me. And if he's what Bruce Pearl says, they didn't have that. Right. Because Carl Anthony doesn't do this. I'm talking about seven. He, he set the ACC. Well, he started in North Carolina. He goes to the ACC tournament as a, a true freshman, freshman and has eight blocks against Notre Dame. That's still the record for the tournament. Right. Okay. That's what he's capable of. Right. Well, what if you can get 15 or 20 minutes out of him a night blocking shots? Right. Holding down the paint. Right. That 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 that'll be very that'll be very good for them. But I I mean, I think. That, Great, at the end of the day, you see great or you see good or you see starter, you see all-star, all-NBA. On Chet? <sighs> you know, I told you, he's definitely a starter, and I yes. think you'll go so far as a starter. Yes. But can you edge into star? I, I, I just don't, I, I just I'm don't see it. I'm trying to, but I didn't see it when I, I, it was time. I, I, just, I just don't see yep. it, Skip. I just don't see well, it. Sam Presti is saying... You're wrong, and, and I'm going to be wrong. Is he more apt to be Nikola Jokic, Luka Doncic, or Kristaps Przingis? I'm going to go Przingis. Yeah. He, he has quickness and skills that even Przingis doesn't have. That's just to my eye. Right. But Skip, will Przingis it can shoot it. I know it can. Well, he can shoot bombs. Yes. I mean, he's a logo shooter. Yes. Right? Yeah, well. Got a nice turn. I mean... Like I said, but the size, Skip. He, he and, and Porzingis doesn't have that that killer thing, that basketball killer in him. Okay. And this kid, he's a trash talker. But do you have that? Does that fire burn in you? Well, you said uh, he uh, he bet on himself. He got seven on his dice. He rolled yeah. lucky seven. So yep. he said, I bet on myself thirty-four. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.